Hi everyone, this is Kelsey Jones, Executive Editor at Search Engine Journal, and I'm happy to be joined here today with Christina Baldessare. She is the founder of Zebra Advertisement. Christina, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. So I really wanted to talk to you about Snapchat. Yes, because, I love Snapchat. Yes, Snapchat is the way to go. I know. So some of uh, people that I talk to about Snapchat, they say it's hard to use, they don't really get it. Uh, what are some ways that c people can help overcome that and kind of get over the learning curve of using Snapchat for their business or just personally? I think what happens with Snapchat is brands sign up for it, they get a username, they don't know what to do with it, it's not intuitive, and then they just stop using it. They can't delete the username because once you, you know, sign up for it, your username is there forever. Even if you delete it, it's not available for anyone else. So what you can do with it is snap more like a millennial. So Snapchat is really intuitive for millennials, and I think um, a couple of things that brands could do is just use some of the little known hacks. There are so many things to outsmart Snapchat's limitations that give you just a little bit more ads and a little bit more branding. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier. So tell us some of your favorite hacks for Snapchat that people might not know. I think my, my favorite one is a creepy screenshot. So basically, <laughs> I love it. It's, it's, it's creepy and it's genius at the same time. So what happens is um, one of the metrics you track in Snapchat is do people take screenshots of what I snapped? And uh, of course, if you take a screenshot, the person gets a notification. So what if you see something like, you know, when you see your competitors on Instagram, you kind of want to send it to someone, they would never know that it was you, but on Snapchat, they get a notification. So what you got to do is go to your airplane mode, turn it on, take the screenshot, and you're good to go. Nobody gets a notification. You turn off the airplane mode, and nobody will ever know. So that's a really cool thing to do. Yeah, I would have never known that if you hadn't told me. Yeah, kind of it's creepy, a sneaky thing. It's kind okay of creepy. For I'll admit, yeah. I'll admit. Don't, don't abuse that trick. Don't be creepy. Yeah, I think something um, for brands, I mean, it helps to kind of grab content from someone else, but for brands, maybe what I see the most is it's not like Facebook. On Facebook, you put out content and you leave it out there for people to see. And that's really what you want. You want, it, you want people to see it. Mm -hmm. On Snapchat, since there's no real follower count, it's kind of hard to get followers, you shouldn't use Snapchat to kind of put content out there. You should use it as a chat. This is what it is. It's a messaging social media network, basically. Mm -hmm. So produce the content and then send it to people. So what you can do with Snapchat is use it as a one-stop destination. So you know if you start something on Facebook, you can't share it on Snapchat. If you start something on Instagram, you can't share it on Snapchat. But what you can do is download individual snaps, go to your Instagram story. So the order is important here, it'll save you a ton of time. Download the snap, go to your Instagram stories, swipe down with your finger vertically, and you'll get the last 24 hours of content, including your downloaded snap. So that's a really neat hack. Then what you can do is just kind of select it from there, upload it to your Instagram stories. Then Instagram stories are downloadable. So what you want to do is download that and post it on your profile. And from your profile, there are buttons there. Do you want to share this on your Facebook page? Do you want to share this on your Twitter? Do you want to share this on Flickr, Foursquare, all kinds of things? So Snapchat is your one-stop destination, in my opinion, to share on all the networks. Yeah, you can just, just repurpose yeah. it for other networks. Yeah, you start there and share it everywhere else. Now, what about, so I did a Snapchat webinar um, in October of this year, and I talked a lot about geo filters. So what are some ways that you've seen uh, people using geo filters, and do you have any good you know, tips or tricks for that? Well, I think the most popular geo filter, so for, first of all, um, I loved your webinar. It was a really good one. If you haven't watched it, watch it. And um, I think the, what, what the misconception is with geo filters is it's expensive. It's not expensive. You can run a three hour geo filter easily for around $150 for the size of where we're here right now in the Las Vegas Convention Hall. So if you're in the Las Vegas Convention Center, you kind of select the hall we're in, maybe a couple of the speakers room, will cost you around $150 yeah. for about three hours. So that's what we did during my session. We kind of put the custom filter up and uh, people could snap with it. And it was a cool thing to have. It wasn't costly. So you can't target the whole world forever. And it's first come first serve so you want to make sure that uh, the maximum length is 30 days so you want to be um, kind of first come first serve try to get it six weeks ahead of time of your event um, get a, get your custom filter out make sure it's under 300 kilobytes make sure you get the the width 1080 the height 1920 make sure you get that right it's a PNG file and a transparent background so 80% what I've heard um, from a person who works at Snapchat is 80% of filters that are custom geo filters for businesses get disapproved because it's not transparent right oh, it's because cool. you have when you design it you have yeah. to put something in the background like a gray something and you forget it's there so that just takes the four or five days approval because you have to resubmit it so make sure the size is right it's transparent it's under 300 kilobytes it's a PNG file and that will save you half the hassle already 
then once you submitted that, um, you have to be first come, first serve. So if you're Macy's and you have a Ross next door or whatever is next door to you, um, you can block them with your geofilter and they'll never get a shot at it again during your geofilter. So if you have a competitor down the street or if you have an event where there's like a booth and there's a booth next, uh, next to you or maybe a little bit of a bigger area here with your geofencing, the first person that does it gets the job. So if you put your geofilter in ahead of time, most likely nobody else can put it during that time. So that's just a cool thing cool thing to do. It's not pricey and it's a, it's a great way to get people to use Snapchat in your store, in your location, or maybe your service business, you have a special event and occasion. And uh, it's, it's not that expensive, so give it a shot. Yeah, cool. So one last question I wanted to ask you is about um, user-generated content on Snapchat. So if you're a big brand like Taco Bell that has a huge following that's also on Snapchat, what are some ways you could kind of uh, connect and engage and uh, capitalize on the content people are creating that might be you know, at your location or using your products? For if like a large brand is advertising on Snapchat? Or, or a smaller if, brand. Or let's say Snapchat. I took in my Snap story, we were at Taco Bell okay. and we went on a, oh, you know, an see. adventure. Yeah. Is there a way Taco Bell could use that content? They could. Um, and I was I was speaking to State Farm earlier about using Snapchat for millennials because that's really um, that's really the crowd that is most on it right now. But we're seeing more of the 25 to 34 age range in each case. Um, so if you're if you're a large brand, you want to take advantage of the user-generated content. It's the same for smaller large brands, in my opinion, because all you have to do is grab it and make it visible to someone who's not on Snapchat. Because yep. People who aren't Snapchat will likely see it if it's nice, if it's funny. Um, so what you want to do is grab it elsewhere and transfer that. So there's a great, uh, there's there's a lot of great things you can do. You can do an Instagram contest and have you know have the funniest snap or the um, oh, well, the like craziest that. snap or um, whatever you, you know that uh, the Taco Bell one was like a giant gigantic taco head. Oh yeah, it was genius. I thought it was so silly and so Snapchatty. And uh, you can put that on Instagram and use a custom hashtag, and then you can start tracking your ROI because that's really what you want to do. You don't just want brand awareness. You want to be able to track it and see what happens to it. So anything hashtagable is an easy way to do it. Another really great way is to use Twitter short codes with that. So if you paste your, your Snapchat video or image on Twitter, um, you can have people tweet you a short code that then integrates with a notification calendar. So wow. let's say you have a TV episode, maybe National Geographic wants to do that, then they can say, you know, tweet me um, National Snap or Geo Snap or whatever, whatever they want to use. Um, and then automatically they're signed up for a calendar and get notifications for a TV show, for an event, maybe a, a fan-based uh, Snapchat. So there are a bunch of different things large brands can do. Awesome. Well, if people want to talk to you more about Snapchat, where can they find you online? On Snapchat? <laughs> um, well, that's one way, obviously. So um, my, my handle right now is the Baldessaris. It's just uh, my last name. If you Google Christina Baldessari and search engine journal, you'll probably find some of my articles there. And uh, you can also Google my name, but as you know on Snapchat, the search function is not that great. So find me on Twitter, Christina Baldassari, or my Facebook page, and find my handle there to see how it's spelled. And uh, what I do on Snapchat is just kind of uh, people follow, follow me around and kind of see what my life and, and businesses are like in Miami. And uh, every social network has different content. So you kind of can take a look, and if you don't like it, no hard feelings, follow me on Twitter instead, and I'll follow you back. So it just kind of depends on what your favorite network is. Great. Well, thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So this is Kelsey Jones with Search Engine Journal. Hi, my name is Brent Satoris. I'm here with Search Engine Journal. Uh, I'm joined today by Gary Yesh, uh, Chief of Sunshine and Happiness at Google. That's uh, correct. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this Thank morning. Thank you for having me. Um, there's been a lot of discussion, uh, nah, I don't know, a lot of discussion, but there's been some decent discussion recent about uh, Penguin. It's, oh, I, uh, it's, I, I, I never heard about Penguin. No, no. no, no. They, they've been running around here chasing you, so. <laughs> um, Becoming more of a part of uh, the you know the everyday algorithm, the yep. live algorithm, yep. and uh, my stomach is the three takeaways: yes. capture. Yes. I'm leaving with way more. I also like the single session format for conferences. I agree to be a speaker here because I think above all else, the, the quality of people who attend the meeting. Something to be said about the fact that um, you can't just hey, come. Uh, it's by invitation only. What I really like about these speakers is that it's a very well-rounded 